Hi, this is Heidi and I am in the Butterfly House at Garden Crossings and I wanted to take you for a tour through this and kind of show you the different plants that we have and what their purposes are. This is really the first introduction to the Butterfly House. It's not quite officially open yet, uh, but we hope to have it open this summer when we get our butterflies in. But for now, let's go and take a walk and see the plants that are blooming inside this beautiful indoor garden. So to start off, I'm going to show you just a couple of the butterflies that are in here. This is a black swallowtail, and they like to kind of hang out there on the edge of the shade cloth. We also have a, we'll see if we can see it. This is a hummingbird moth. It's a clear wing. And there's just one of those in here. And as we go along, we might see a couple of the spice bush swallowtails if they're showing. But right now, there's only just like five butterflies in there in here we have a lot of caterpillars that are munching and crunching on the different plants uh, specifically on the escalapius or milkweed uh, because we really want to introduce the monarch butterflies into this habitat and just educate people on how the monarch population is and what they can do to help really encourage the growth of the monarch uh, population there's another one right in there so we're going to start at let's say point A and I'll take you through a walk through the whole garden. So in this garden what we've done is we've added a lot of host plants for specifically monarchs and black swallowtails and then there's a lot of nectar plants in here as well. As this habitat you know grows over time we hope to add in more different species of butterflies but we didn't want to start off you know with a ton we wanted to kind of just learn this what we need to do and how this is going to work before we really go and populate this thing with a lot of different species so we're going to talk about some of the things that are blooming right now uh, one thing that's really important is there's a lot of shrubs annuals and perennials so a good mix of plants uh, we'll start off with zinnias so there's a lot of zinnias in here because they're really great pollinator plants for the butterflies some other things that are starting to color up here are some butterfly bush. This one here is Miss Molly. In the back we have, let's see which one is this one, Miss Pearl. And next to it is Miss Violet. So they're just starting to show a little bit of color here on the butterfly bushes. We have some salvia that's just kind of starting to send its flowers up. And then several different uh, species of milkweed. This here is a tropical milkweed. So some of these are tropical milkweeds in here, others are perennials. The thing I like about the tropicals though, is they're virtually always in flower. So, and they get pretty huge. Where the perennials, they tend to kind of go to flower and then kind of send up their pod for seed, which is good because you want that. Uh, but I also wanted to have a lot of color, which is what the tropical milkweeds are giving us. In the front here, we have some of the Nepeta cat's pajamas, a very low growing Nepeta. Great for borders, which you can see that we've done here. Another thing we did is when we were planting is we planted a lot of groupings of plants, which typically if you have watched any of my garden tours, I don't do a lot of groupings, uh, but I wanted to do that in here because I wanted to create mass impact with the different plants that we were using. Uh, this here is another milkweed and we're going to take a look here because there's a couple caterpillars so when i got these in about a week and a half ago they were about a centimeter big now they're almost an inch inch and a half so whoop so they definitely are well on their way to uh, maturity and creating those chrysalises this particular one here is called Asclepius Ice Ballet. So it's gonna have white flowers once it starts blooming. Um, you can see there's not a lot of leaves in this area and that's because the caterpillars have been eating them. So don't worry, that's what they're supposed to do. Also, I did wanna point out if you have milkweed and you notice bugs on your plant, these are caterpillars, this is the monarch caterpillar. Yes, they might be a, they're not a bug, but don't, don't freak out. This is what you want to see on your milkweed. We have some daisies, Shasta daisies here, just starting to bloom. This is Daisy May, and we have a grouping of three. We created little paths within this garden. So we have the cement path that goes through the middle, 
but then we created little offshoots that way people could step into these offshoots and get a closer look at the different plants so that way when there's more butterflies in here if the butterflies are on any of these plants they can go ahead and see them more up close and personal so for the black swallowtails fennel and dill are host plants so we have grouping there and then these actually are buried in the ground in a pot so if we start noticing that the caterpillar that the um, caterpillars are eating and there's hardly any left we can go ahead and swap these pots out and replace them with more if we need to we've got some of the verbena meteor showers this is a great pollinator plant for the butterflies some more for the black swallowtail right there. We've got rockin' fuchsia salvia, which you can see there's just loaded with buds, just starting to bloom a little bit. Another important thing in a butterfly habitat is you wanna have a water source or puddling station. So that's what this here is, it's just on a very low drip, and that way if the butterflies wanna land on that and get a drink, there's a water source for them. Oh, look at here. So this is a spice bush swallowtail right here. Really pretty looking butterfly. We'll get him up on a flower soon or he can go his own way. As we walk along the path, we have allium. I'm not sure if these are millennium or serendipity. Basically, they're very similar. A big grouping of three of them there. So those will be really pretty when they start to bloom. And then right along the front, those little plants, those are pentas, which are great for butterflies as well. So as the season goes along, some of these plants, you know, need some time to grow yet. One thing I want to point out is when this was planted, these were all planted from one quart size containers. Now I, I need to take that back. They weren't all planted from one quart size containers. Most of what you're seeing here was planted from a one quart size container. Um, some of the shrubs were from gallons but definitely perennials and annuals all started in like a four and a half or a quart size. In the back there, the purple, we've got some more of the cat's pajamas nepeta, and then there's some lantana behind it. Behind the bench here, this is the black cat pussy willow. And I put willow in here because there are some butterflies that like willow. So as we're introducing more butterflies into the habitat, I thought let's think ahead and get things planted so that way they're mature by the time we introduce new species into the garden. We've got Agastache blue boa, which is really not only a pretty plant, it's also nicely, uh, has a nice fragrance to it, kind of like an anise smell. As we take the corner, you'll see we've got it lined there in Lobularia, that is Blushing Princess. And we kind of did that on both sides of the walkway here to give kind of a mirrored look because that really stands out nicely and kind of draws your eye here to the center of the butterfly house. We've got petunias poked through because we wanted to have just consistent color at all times, which the petunias will give us that. We've got some along the back wall there, some hollyhock, some tall flocks. Here are some of the pugster butterfly bushes, very compact, and you can see they're loaded with buds. So once those bloom, they're gonna have huge flowers on them and that's just gonna be a great plant, I think, for the, um, the butterflies. In the back there against the wall, we've got the salvia rock and fuchsia. Again, I love the salvia. It's just, I like the tall spikiness of it. That's also a great hummingbird plant. plant. So you'll find a lot of the plants here that are in this garden are also great plants if you're looking to create a hummingbird garden as well. As we walk along the path, we've got some sedum for some late fall interest. And also, you know, to keep that pollen source going later in the season, we've got the Magic Show Purple Illusion Veronica. In the back, you'll see there's a, the orange plant, that's Kufia vermilionaire. Another grouping of milkweed, Asclepius tuberosa. And then more zinnias and lantana kind of poked throughout. The beautiful magenta plant you're seeing there, that is a monarda, which is a beautiful plant for butterflies, hummingbirds, as well as your pollinators. Groupings of unplugged so blue salvia, 
some more Nepeta cat's pajamas. You can see we kind of put that one throughout the garden in several places just because that's a really long blooming perennial. So a perennial that will give us lots of color as we go on through the season. As we walk along, we have another Monarda, not flowering yet. Some more of the Verbena meteor showers. A grouping of banana cream Shasta daisy. Cone flowers. Another Monarda. Some of the opening act flock. We've got the light lavender and then also the white there in the background with some more cone flowers uh, sprinkled in. And then we also put some impatiens in here, some of the sun patients, just again for different texture than the petunias, but something that will give color all season long. We have another pugster butterfly bush here in front of us with some cone flower there planted behind it. The Monarda that's blooming, some Asclepius behind it, and then more of the meteor showers, Verbena. As we look in this little section here, this is packed full of fun. We've got petunias, lantana. Up front here is another pugster butterfly bush. The reason why we went so heavy on the pugster butterfly bush in this garden is because they don't get very tall. So they're compact, a lot of flowers, but aren't gonna take up a lot of space because I really wanna represent a lot of plants in here than having just one you know, big, huge plant. I think it's nice with these compact shrubs that we're able to do a lot with them and not take up a lot of space. That bright yellow foliage you're seeing, that's Caryopteris uh, Sunshine Blue. Beautiful, another Monarda blooming. Some more, I'm not sure if that's dill or fennel, but that's for the black swallowtails. A lot of petunias kind of tucked in this area for color. Another Monarda. Salvia Rock and Fuchsia. And you can see that Salvia Rock and Fuchsia. That's a pretty big plant for an annual. It's about 24 inches tall, and it's going to continue to get taller as the, as the summer goes on, upwards of probably 30 to 36 inches. Another Pugster Butterfly Bush. Some more Verbena Meteor Showers. And on the end here, this is Agasachi Mango Tango. Agasachi is another perennial that's fairly long blooming. If you find that it's starting to slow down a little bit, don't be afraid to give it a little trim because it will be right back at the flowering stages within just a couple weeks or so. And as I'm standing here, I can smell that too. It's very, very um, like the anise candy smell. So a really fun perennial to add to the garden. That one's a little bit temperamental here in zone five, so I'd recommend probably for zone six gardens. Here we've got Agasachi Blue Boa. We kind of mirrored it on the other side as well, and that's really pretty. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna walk to the end and then we'll head back as I'm describing the different things for you. So with the butter, butterfly garden, because I'm sure somebody's gonna ask, is we kind of have a double door system. There's a door on the outside and then there's plastic flappers in the front. So that way as people enter and exit the butterfly house, the butterflies can't escape. Um, so that's keeping them in so that they all stay in their habitat. All right, so staying back in this corner here, let's see, let's head to the way back corner first. The white flower you're seeing in the back, that is opening act phlox. Next to it is some Achillea or yarrow. We have the Sensation Honeysuckle. I wanted to get something with a little bit of height, so that's why we put that there. Along the edge is some more Escalapius. Some Truffula Pink right up here in front. And there's a lot of Zinnias and Coneflowers kind of tucked in this area. So this is gonna really be, I think, a nectar station. Uh, Although I say that and then I look and I'm seeing, you know, about five or six Escalapius in here for the monarchs. So a lot of, a lot of variety going on. In the back there, that taller shrub, that is the Lilac Centera Double Blue. Some more dill and fennel with some Escalapius there tucked in the middle. Another sedum, which is again for the fall color and to make for sure we have nectar source for in the fall. Let's tuck into this little area here. This little walkway, so the other one was lined with Cleome Senorita Rosalita. 
This one here is lined with truffle pink. So we'll see how that does. The Senorita definitely in the beginning of the video did a lot more as far as filling out faster, but I'm sure these will look nice as the season goes on. Lining this path here, we have the Lantana. This is Luscious Bananarama, the yellow. A lot of Asclepius. We've got the Meteor Showers Verbena here. This will just be, I'm sure, a flurry of butterflies once they emerge. The small plants you're seeing there, that is Aster, so late season color. Some more of the Bananarama Lantana. And then the Salvia Violet Riot. So what we'll do as these plants that are blooming now, uh, blooms fade and are spent, we'll come in and we'll trim them back. And a lot of these plants will reflush and recycle so that we'll get a second round of blooms later on in the season. We've also tucked a couple aqua pots in the planting here just to kind of add that splash of color from the pottery. And the thing that's nice with these aqua pots is we only have to come in and fill them up with water about once a week so that they keep looking really nice. The plants that we used in this particular one, we used Creeping Jenny, Verbena, some Coleus, Kufia, and can uh, Canna Lilies. In this garden, there is drip, drip irrigation underneath all these plants so that we just have to turn the drippers on and not really worry about water on top of the foliage or like a sprinkler blasting out the butterflies when they're in here. If need be, we can set a little sprinkler on to spot water if we need to, but right now our hopes is, is that the drip irrigation in this butterfly house will get all the plants the water that they're gonna need. So in this area here, we have Lantana, a lot more Escalapius. We've got some Pink Potion Veronica right front here. Beautiful Chinook Caladiums. That's just gonna give us some foliage color. We got Saladago. Some more Veronica in the back. Some beautiful Yarrow. More Escalapius. And I see a little friend, so as long as we're so close, let's go in and take a little look-see. Monarch's really going to town. It's just, it's been fun to watch these guys grow over the last few days. Or actually, it's been about 10 days now. Uh, here's another Asclepius that we have Caterpillar on. Let's go in and take a look. So sometimes if you're having a hard time finding the caterpillars on your milkweed, basically if you look for the caterpillar poop, little brown droppings, and look up, that's when you'll find the caterpillars. We have some more hollyhock plant along the edge. So those will give us some height as they grow, along with some cone flowers. And here's the black cat pussy willow on the other side. So we did try to create some symmetry in this garden by doing a little bit of mirror, mirroring. So in the middle, we wanted something to kind of break up the long runway of the path. So this is the new Weeping Cherry Tree from Proven Winners. I'll pop the name up on the screen because right now I'm, I'm drawing blank. Um, but we planted this Weeping Cherry Tree here in the middle. This is an early spring color. And then underneath it, we planted a mass of the Raspberry Rush petunias along with some Lantana and Verbena Meteor Showers just so that there's some color right in the middle here that draws your eye to the center of the garden. Off to the side here, we have more of the Lobularia Blushing Princess, Meteor Showers Verbena. Another grouping of the Pugster Butterfly Bush. Lots of Escalapius and cone flowers, And then some Dillon Fennel there in the back for the Black Swallowtails. As we head down this path, we have some of the cat's meow, which is a little bit taller, Nepeta. Milkweed in the background, along with cone flowers. I added some etchnops in because I know we sell a ton of this, but I've never actually seen it bloom. 
So I wanted to plant some in here just so I could see what this actually looks like when it's in flower. So excited to see that this summer. We'll make sure to show you that when it's in bloom in another video. Along the edge here, we have zinnias, lantana, some tall phlox, which that will give us color later on in the summer. Some liatris, which is a great plant for the pollinators, along with sun patients, some sedum, a grouping of coneflowers, some more zinnias and sun patients, and then an Escalapius tuberosa. In the corner here, we have Nepeta cat's pajamas, very compact with opening act phlox, lantana, and more verbena. In this little grouping here, let's see, looks a lot of petunias to give us consistent color. Up front here is gonna be a tall phlox. Got some salvia. Aster, which is gonna be late season color. That's right up front here. Salvia rock and fuchsia, beautiful tropical milkweed. So this was a plant I got last fall when I knew we were going to be creating this butterfly house, and we just kept it in the greenhouse at you know a minimal temperature, uh, and it kept it going all season because I knew if I wanted to get these butterflies and caterpillars in here, I needed to have something mature to give them to eat off of. Uh, so this tropical milkweed has done outstanding, constantly in color. And we're going to go in because I'm seeing caterpillars. So these guys are getting pretty plump. I think they are almost ready to do their thing and spin into that chrysalis. There's another one here. So it's just exciting. Exciting to watch the transformation that's happening. Here's another plant and there's one right up front here. Just a beautiful sight to see. Definitely this is gonna be a educational thing where we can teach people about monarchs, teach people about you know, the circle of life with caterpillars, butterflies, and how they all you know, go through their different stages. So we're really excited for that piece too, is just the education piece. More verbena, aster that's blooming early, salvia, flax, and sedum. And then the corner again is the nice, beautiful agastache. So we're really excited to take you through this butterfly house as it matures. Like I said, it's in its very early stages right now. So we're just excited to be able to show you where we're at. This was built in the fall of 2020. It was planted up in March of 2021. And right now it's mid-May of 2021. And you can just see how the plants have really filled out. I was a little skeptical at first that there wouldn't be enough in here or it wouldn't be mature enough and it, it just that i felt like it wasn't going to look like what we were envisioning it for the first year so so far i've been very happy with what the plants are doing how they're looking how they're filling out so now we're just waiting on the butterflies caterpillars and chrysalises hoping that everything times itself out right so that we can have a beautiful population of monarch and black swallowtail butterflies this is Heidi from the Garden Crossings Butterfly House. Have a great day.